Back in 2015, I made a simple circuit containing 24 individually oscillating LEDs. These LEDs were programmed using a metaheuristic algorithm, a modified version of the Firefly algorithm. The goal of this exercise was to achieve discontinuous pass coupling and to see of any emergent non-programmed behaviors in the LED network. To my surprise, the LEDs behaved with some characteristics that reminded me of quantum mechanics. The quantum light network that emerged from this collection of discontinuous pass coupled oscillators allowed me to create a kind of a mathematical model which related the synchronization of individual oscillators to the famous Feynman path integral formalism in quantum mechanics. The path integral formalism is a very useful way to interpret the movement of particles through a system. For example, the path integral formalism can be used to describe how individual electrons can form a wave-like pattern in a double slit experiment. Similarly, I could use the path integral formalism of quantum mechanics to describe network synchronization, and I created a simple mathematical model which relates the two. This model is simply an experimental or graphical representation of what I am trying to interpret from this system. The path integral formalism of quantum mechanics offers an alternative way to describe such systems, and it is interesting that principles of emergence seem to arise. So I have a system here of two oscillators uh, that are coupling to each other uh, using discontinuous uh, pass coupling. And we see that uh, the two systems uh, are have, consist of a emitter and a receiver. So we have a LED, which is uh, able to cycle uh, between three colors, red, green, and blue. And um, each is linked to a sensor, uh, a photodiode, which is able to um, update the, uh, the light emitted from its um, partner. So when we have the light, for example, shining into another, it can cause a reaction. It can cause it to oscillate at the same uh, wavelength and also at the same frequency. So we have this system is couple, uh, controlled using a um, a microcontroller, uh, a Atmel uh, 85 microcontroller, uh, or uh, it's so it's able to um, use this metaheuristic algorithm in order to uh, cycle through um, the function of the uh, send uh, the synchronization uh, procedure. So it's able to synchronize. Uh, after a while, it has interference uh, with itself but after a while it's able to synchronize and select the wavelength uh, which allows it to form a coupling so as we see it's more or less flashing at the same rate but it will begin to update itself and select a color or a wavelength basically that is the optimum wavelength for the coupling so we see it evolving towards the blue end of the uh, spectrum so uh, when it's excited, um, it flashes red, and when it is in a stable uh, position, it cycles blue. You can see it's become excited, so it's now flashing red, and it will then excite the, its neighbor as well, so it will begin to induce a reaction. So this is a simple uh, setup of discontinuous pass coupling uh, between two individual oscillators. Now this is a more complicated version of the uh, network of oscillators. So we can see that uh, we have synchronization more or less between the uh, network of uh, individual oscillators. So each one of these uh, oscillators is uh, synchronized with its partner. And uh, even though we have more or less uh, them all flashing at the same wavelength and at the same rate, at the same uh, period of, of um, oscillation, we uh, have some kind of instabilities kind of in the system as well. So I've called these uh, kind of this setup uh, Feynman's uh, fireflies because uh, the metaheuristic algorithm that these use is in fact 
very similar uh, to the um, a, a famous uh, meta heuristic algorithm called the Firefly algorithm, which is used for um, basically network synchronization. Uh, so actually, with my own kind of uh, code, I've modified the uh, the original um, Firefly al algorithm a little bit um, to um, have kind of basically discrete or basically quantization uh, in the in the um, procedure, so that it's basically selective and although even though the light is on in this room uh, we we already we see um intrinsically in the system some uh, kind of instabilities basically random fluctuations occurring so uh, all meta heuristic algorithms are kind of a uh, interplay a balance if you will between um uh, exploitation of a particular rule set in this case it's uh, flashing when a neighbor is flashing at the same rate but it also has a randomization element in it so um, mathematically, you can demonstrate that, in fact, the um, meta heuristic, most all of the meta heuristic algorithms, and there's kind of a there is kind of a zoo of them out there, uh, all with different kind of names. Usually, they're biomimetic algorithms. They're mimicking some biological process, you know, like synchronizing uh, how fireflies uh, communicate or how bats communicate and um, how wolves uh, communicate, so on and so on. Um, there's also genetic ones, uh, ones that mimic uh, genetic uh, algorithms that, uh, you know, are used for evolution and so forth. There's also uh, gradient descent algorithms, which are used for, uh, among other things, uh, search optimization, uh, optimization problems in general. And they're usually uh, energy based. They have like an en uh, they basically represent a network as an energy surface. And, um, you know, it's kind of like a ball rolling down a, a kind of a steep slope uh, with kind of different, you know, peaks and valleys in it. And the randomization term um, kind of keeps it out of the uh, the local uh, minima and uh, kind of nudges it, uh, nudges the, uh, the search towards the global um, uh, minima or global maxima, whichever uh, direction that the uh, optimization algorithm is, uh, is uh, trending towards. So all of these algorithms are basically uh, variations on a theme. They're actually uh, essentially descended from a kind of a universal uh, form of, of you know, network, basically, uh, interactions. And um, in many ways, the, uh, the same uh, characteristics of these synchronizing networks are also uh, displayed in quantum systems and vice versa. Uh, many of the quantum uh, networks that are used uh, and being you know explored in quantum computing and so on are actually um, very similar to the uh, meta heuristic algorithms based on network synchronization. So that's primarily why I wanted to make a setup like this to kind of uh, demonstrate on a macroscopic scale kind of some of the networks that are talked about in you know quantum uh, networks and so forth. But um, uh, what's interesting and why I call these Feynman's fireflies is that uh, Feynman's uh, path integral formalism of quantum mechanics can also of course, be, you know, is used for quantum quantum mechanics, of course, but it's also very useful for uh, kind of characterizing and kind of understanding uh, the way in which uh, these individual oscillators can synchronize and uh, trend towards, um, in this case, obviously a blue um, synchronization uh, system. And just like with uh, any quantum system, if you disturb it in a certain way, so for example, if I were to um, if I were to block the light emitted from here, it would cause a disturbance. It would cause a kind of a discontinuity in the uh, in the way in which the system is now oscillating. It's now oscillating at a different rate. Or if I blocked it off at this end, for example, it would cause a discontinuity because it's then causing the system to become out of out of sync, basically, or out of phase. So you're beginning to see now discontinuities in the system just by just by blocking the signal pretty much uh, or by causing a disturbance in the system as well. Another thing that characterizes this system is the fact that it's kind of in a very uh, uniform topology. There's, there's kind of order more or less to the arrangement of the individual oscillators, kind of like the order that you see in crystals, imagining that each one of these oscillators is like an individual atom or for example, a group of electrons in like a um, in a metal or a superconductor where they begin to form a kind of like a sea of electrons. So, uh, since it's a it's a network, it's a system. What happens if I introduce another oscillator into the system? It will cause some sort of a disturbance, right? 
it will uh, cause it to become out of phase and it will if i bring it in closer if i begin to flash it it can also then begin to adapt it can then kind of adopt some of the characteristic of the network as well so it'll begin to oscillate at the same uh, rate at the same phase so it can cause an interaction but it can also begin to have a memory then as well it will actually begin to individually kind of oscillate at the same uh, rate and if i take it away it'll begin to decay so it'll the idea is is that when they're close together that they'll begin to oscillate at the same rate even though they're made up of individual uh, pieces and like any meteoristic algorithm it will have a randomization term so at random uh, individual oscillators will begin to uh, oscillate randomly of course like this one again and it will can carry away some of that uh, information to maybe another another part of the of the system as well so this yeah so you can see that one now is oscillating so just like in any system uh, and uh, any system is sensitive to external stimuli uh, and systems that obey principles of quantum uh, behavior are definitely very vulnerable to uh, external external uh, stimuli as well. So um, this is an interesting kind of uh, setup. Um, it took me a while to make it, uh, but it's based on some very interesting mathematical rules. And uh, there is a kind of a there is even more subtle relationships to um, kind of you know the chaotic nature of this system and natures of kind of classical even even macroscopic classical systems that um, are very interesting and uh, have this kind of network type behavior. Uh, even things like, you know, uh, you know, our algorithms in particular for like artificial intelligence and so forth uh, that are primarily based on synchronization and um, have this interesting uh, behavior uh, of, of um, being you know, it, having intrinsic rules, but also having randomly varying terms added to them. And they begin to have this kind of principle of emergence. Uh, they have this um, kind of principle by which certain behaviors that have not been pre-programmed uh, into the into the system, like, uh, for example, uh, certain patterns, for example, that might emerge from a system like this that are not, you know, discreetly or explicitly programmed into the system, will just begin to randomly, seemingly randomly emerge out of nowhere. And they're not just like, they're not just like noise, uh, static noise. They do have a sort of a structure, almost like a fractal structure to them. So that sort of thing is, you know, one of the reasons why I'm personally interested in kind of this, this area of research is because, uh, not just because it's useful in a kind of an information theory sort of way, but the fact that kind of you will see uh, systems of kind of like emergence uh, emerge from some of these uh, these systems and they're they're almost fractal like in behavior they have kind of uh, kind of structure um, superstructure which kind of is a is a expansion if you will of of the uh, the microstructure uh, from which they emerge so even though one of these is starting to oscillate as blue uh, it eventually begins to kind of propagate through the system, for example, and, you know, make them all oscillate as blue and uh, stuff like that. You know, I mean, this is a system of only 24 uh, individual oscillators. You could imagine what uh, sort of emergence would come about if you made it even larger. So thanks for watching this video. I know it's a bit kind of, uh, of a random, random topic to uh, start discussing, but um, it's something that always fascinated me and... Uh, I hope that uh, I've been able to share a bit of that fascination with you today.